Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for coming to class. You're going to start, we're going to start with our, so our blankets are usually folded like this. And we're going to take it in just kind of a flat burrito. So don't make it super rounded. But for me, my blanket folds in three. Um, so Adriana, go the other way with your blanket. Go the long way. <laughs> yeah. So turn it sideways and then just fold it. Yep. Three times. And then set it on your mat. Uh, so your head and your back is going to go on the blanket. If you lay down and, you know, because we're all different sizes, if you lay down and the blanket is hitting your back or low back in a place that doesn't feel good, just scoot. Because what I want supported is the head, the neck, and the upper back. So however you can do that would be awesome. <clears throat> and if you need a little extra something on your head, if your head needs to come up some, you can just fold the top the very top part of your blanket over and make a little pillow. But please don't make it big because we're going to be doing work on here where I want your neck neutral. And then go ahead and lay down. And, and take the time to fuss with where that blanket is on your back. If you're feeling the low back too much, the first thing we do, right, is lift the hips, lengthen the tailbone, really stretch through the lower back, and then set the hips back down and see if you can find the center line of your sacrum. So that's what we're looking for. And then maybe even just some really soft uh, tilts and tucks of the pelvis so that you can find that even kind of uh, clock face where your pelvis is neither dipping uh, nor overarching. Keep the legs bent for now, please. And feel the shoulders, either side of those shoulders start to descend down around the blanket. Let your arms come down, palms face up. And find your breath, everybody. Start your inhale and your exhale. Just start to notice how you feel. Notice how your body is feeling. How does your back feel in this position? So we're going to be working a lot with the upper body and the back body. So that's what today's class is all about want you to feel your feet on the floor. Maybe you can distinguish uh, your toes, right? Feel your big toe and then try to walk your toes out until you find your pinky toe. Notice your breath. Nice big belly breath here. And as you exhale, feel that upper belly press toward the blanket and maybe the back of the chest. And notice as you inhale, the expansion of the side ribs. So take it out nice and wide. And exhale it out. Good, few more right here. And last one. And exhale it out. And leave your left foot on the floor. Just draw your right knee toward your chest. Remember you're on the blanket, so it could be a little tippy. I want you to inhale here. And exhale, bring your head toward your knee and just squeeze it in. And then on your inhale, release, maybe push the knee away from you a little bit. On the exhale, curl in. 
Inhale, let the head come down. The knee pushes away. Last one. Exhale, curl, curl, curl. And release, head down, foot down. Readjust the hips if you need to, and then draw the left knee to chest. Pause. Inhale first. Exhale, bring your chin to your knee or your nose to your knee. Inhale, push the knee away, hang on to it. And exhale, curl in. Good, one more. Inhale, let it go. Exhale, curl it in. And release. And I forgot to mention, so I'm just going to get up so my, my lovelies in the room don't have to get up. You're going to need a block. So um, if you don't have a block near you, go ahead and grab it. <laughs> and then <laughs> find your way back down if you had to get up. Sorry about that. I forgot about the block. Good. So from here, I want you to take both arms, no block yet, take both arms up toward the ceiling. And then imagine that you're reaching as if you could touch your fingers to the ceiling, like really reach it. And then draw the shoulders up by your ears. Arms are still straight. Pull them down behind you and let the shoulders kind of wrap around that blanket again. Inhale here, exhale, squeeze the hands down. See if you can touch your elbows to the floor on either side of your shoulders. Inhale, reach up. And when you reach up, extend all the way up. Exhale, down with the arms. It's like you're doing little chest presses here. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, pull it down, press the shoulders into the floor. Good, two more, inhale. Exhale, so even though the elbows are coming down, I want you to feel the shoulder blades engaging, the muscles between the shoulder blades. Good, last one, inhale. Exhale, squeeze them down, now hold. And imagine that your uh, back body is pressing. You can feel your shoulder blades on the blanket maybe. The middle part of the back, the middle part of those shoulder blades, engage. Notice if you're overlifting your chin, try to keep it level and breathe. And then with those hands, try to touch the floor in front of you. So you're going to internally rotate. Don't push it. Hands don't have to touch. And then take them up and let the backs of the hands go down. Uh, more at the level of the head. Good. And then palms to the floor and back of the hand. So internal, external rotation. Notice if one side feels different from the other. Don't forget to breathe. Good. Just one more, both directions. And then release the arms and stretch them overhead. Press the back of the ribs toward the blanket, tone in through the lower belly, and release those arms. Grab your block, and you're going to take the block on the widest uh, level, and the hands are holding the block at the widest, the widest width. Okay, so um, allow that block to come down to your thighs. Your knees are still bent. Come down to your thighs. Draw the shoulders down to the blanket and then inhale, take the arms up. Let them go overhead any amount that you can. If the block touches the floor, that's fine, but don't force it. And then inhale it up and exhale down to your thighs. Good. Four more here, but draw the shoulders nice and open. And release it back. I want you to go slow and just see what happens. Are you tightening up through your neck, right? Or through your jaw? If you are, don't lower the block so close to the floor, okay? And last one here. Hopefully you're going nice and slow. And then take the block up and go to the second width. Second whip. You can hold it any way you want. So I'm not like gripping my block. I'm just letting the palms support it. And same thing, starting at the thighs, drawing it up overhead. Notice any changes. I want you to reach the block behind you, but you don't have to uh, bring it all the way to the floor. Arms are straight, 
the palms are very gently pressing into your block. Good. Let's do three more. Go slow. Notice if your low back is shifting or your ribs are shifting. And two left. Good. Last one. Take it back. Reach the arms behind you so you're hugging your ears. And release. Pause for a moment. Just let the shoulders drop. And then last one here, you're going to go narrowest setting on your block. If this hurts, go back to the second width or the third width. Here we go. Take it up. Feel the rotation of the shoulders. Take them overhead. So now you really are hugging your ears more, right? And then release it down. Good. And two. We're going five on each one. And breathe. Feel the blanket behind you. We're almost done. And four. Yep. And five. Reach the arms, press the palms into your block, and release it. Set that block aside. Just take your arms out to your sides. Elbows are soft and bent like a very soft cactus pose. <clears throat> and then release those arms down to your sides. Listen up. You're going to lengthen your tailbone. You're going to take the hips up off the floor, off the blanket. You're going to snug those hip bones under, 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 right? And then press into your feet and feel a low bridge pose. I don't want you to go high. I want you to snug those hip bones in, in, and uh, toward the front. So we're not arching the back at all. We've got a super long tailbone. Take both arms up to the ceiling. Breathe. As you ex or as you inhale, the hips go down, the arms go down. As you exhale, you lift the arms and lift the hips. Good. And inhale down. And exhale up. Inhale down. And up. It's like you're pulling a rope down. And inhale, last one. And lift up, hold it right here. Drop the upper arms and elbows to the floor. So now you're really drawing those elbows or those shoulders back. You're squeezing as if you could wrap that blanket in between the shoulder blades. Press here, re-lengthen your tailbone. Re-lengthen the glutes, tucking down, down, down to really activate those hips. Now... Try to wrap the outer heels of your feet in. Outer hip heels, the outer skin of your heels. Wrap them in. Feel the outer hips work. Feel the outer glutes work. I know this is, if you're not feeling this, I want your autograph. And lower down, everybody. Woo! Good. Straighten your right leg. Bring your left knee to chest. <clears throat> And release that side and bring the right leg in, straighten the left leg. Find your breath and release. Good job, everybody. Bend both knees. Shift your hips over to one side. Roll over to your other side and come on up. Woo! How's that for some upper body start? So set your blanket aside or sit on it, right? Sitting on it can always be kind of a nice treat, especially if you don't normally. Um, I was talking with the teacher I've been doing training with, and she said it really is important to try to get these knees below the hips. So uh, a blanket can really help with that. Inhale, take it up. Now imagine you're holding the block, right, between your hands. And I want you to reach, reach, reach to make your side body as long as you can, as long as you can. And then draw the ribs down just a little, tone in through the low belly, feel the work in the arms, and then take them out to the side, turn the palms down, let your one hand come down, take the other one up, the palm will shift. Inhale, reach up, squeeze them up, hug your ears. Keep the chin level, notice if you tend to lift up, and then exhale, other side. Good, and again, reach, 
and squeeze. Now, when you squeeze this time, I want you to feel the activation back here. Not You're not just squeezing up. It's not loosey-goosey. You're squeezing the imaginary block even as you're lifting and feel the back muscles work. You feel that? And then exhale, take it down. Good, last one, take it up. Squeeze, but then engage. And other side. Good, lift up everybody. Exhale, let it go. Roll the shoulders back. If you can, switch the way you're sitting. Won't always feel right, it can feel kind of funky. And then notice if you shift it in your sit bones or in the weight that you have one side to the other side. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, arms out, turn the palms down and rotate to one side. Take your hand to your opposite knee. Yep, open up both shoulders. R turn with the head, but don't overturn. And then take your back hand and reach it behind your back to your opposite side waist. Mm -hmm. And then release that opposite hand, the one that's holding on to the knee, and let your hand grab your elbow. So instead of holding your knee, you're gonna bring it back. So sissy, look over here. So this one hand just released from the knee and I'm holding it with that hand, yeah, right? And then feel the spread of the shoulder blades, lift up through the chest, tone in through the belly, and feel the twist. Notice any tension in the head neck, right? Keep it soft. Release that hold of your elbow and come out of twist. Inhale, hug your ears, but then engage. Exhale, twist to the other side. Take one hand to your knee, the other one behind. We start here. Try to level out the shoulders, the low belly tones in. You're going to take the back hand, wrap it around your waist, open up that shoulder a little bit more. You're going to release the opposite knee and see if you can find your elbow instead. That's it. Breathe, everybody. Low belly tones, the chest stays really tall. Deep breath. Exhale, let go. And let go of that elbow. Reach those arms up and exhale down and then just roll it out good job all right let's take that elbow or that elbow let's take the block the blanket out of the way put both of your blocks toward the front of your mat let's come up to table pose <laughs> and I want you to like in table pose, I want you to get this sense that your elbows, right? The inner line of your elbows can move, right? So you don't have to move your hand to move your forearm, which moves the elbow, right? So play with that a couple of times. Don't move the hands, but move the elbows. So inner, outer, you're just going to roll them a little bit. And then let the inner elbow face in the same direction of, as your thumb, reasonably speaking. That should feel good. And then take your shoulders up to your ears. And then imagine you're going to pull your chest through as you draw the shoulders down. Tone the belly in. Flip your toes under. Lift the knees a couple of inches. The inner elbows are facing toward the thumbs. The outer shoulders are working like crazy. The low belly tones in, whoo, and then downward facing dog, everybody, and breathe. And then inhale, tippy toes, exhale, lower your knees, come on off your wrists for a second and shake it out. So I, um, I had another, uh, I was working with the teacher that we did the workshop with, and she, uh, I've been teaching you all for, I don't know how long that when we take our arms up and down dog, we then, right, bring them back down. And she said, I want you to stop doing that. And I'm like, no, <laughs> but it's because if we do this, so everybody do this, 
and sit any way you want to, to, to make this happen. And then pull down like we normally do, right? And then really straighten the arms and maybe feel the tension in this area that I complain about all the time, right? So from here to here, already the tension, and I can't quite get my middle back to work. And this was a big aha for me. So if we take the arms up and we let them come up, but then engage between the shoulder blades where we were on the blanket, right? I don't feel my neck, but I feel my mid back working big time. So let's play with this idea. So come to, to come back onto your knees. And I want you to think about puppy stretch. So the hands are gonna come way forward. I'm going to open up those shoulders. I'm going to externally rotate the elbows. The inner elbows start to face the thumbs. And then I'm going to plant the hands and pull my chest back. Pull my chest or my hips back. Pull back, pull back. Don't let the head just drop to the floor. Keep the ears and the, the arms lined up. So I'm making my arms as long as I can. And then I'm going to engage the middle back right between the shoulder blades. The arms are straight, the tri uh, tricep muscles engage, the mid back is engaged, then pull the belly in. Everybody feeling that? Yep. And then take it back up. Walk the hands back under your shoulders, externally rotate, feel the inner elbows start to face each other. Let the shoulders scrunch a little bit and then squeeze the mid back and notice that's going to walk the shoulders away a little bit. Flip your toes under. I know this is tricky work. Lift the knees, tone the belly, keep that alignment in the chest, keep the knees bent, sink the chest back, get ready for down dog, and then straighten the legs. And breathe. Arms are nice and straight. The back body is still working, but we're not squaring the shoulders like we normally do. And then open up the legs, take them wide, walk your hands back. Bend your knees, take your hands to your knees and come on up. Oh. And notice the change here. I never knew this, right? And I told the teacher, I said, I feel like a beginning student. She said, you are. <laughs> because we're trying to activate these muscles here. It's the middle trapezius muscles. If we're not working these, guess what we're working? The upper trapezius muscles. You know, no wonder, right? Our necks are always bothering us and things are always happening here. So grab your blocks. We're playing with this idea today. So if you're bored, pay attention now. <laughs> Go get a coffee, come back. Turn the toes so that they're facing forward. The blocks are gonna come down in front of you. Whew. Then stand nice and tall and start to raise the arms up out to your side. This was another aha for me. So. Where do we usually go? Think warrior pose, think whatever, right? We're gonna, we're gonna take the shoulders up. We're gonna pull them back. We're gonna let them come down. And then we're gonna externally rotate the arms. So don't overdo, watch that lock of the knees, push the feet away from each other. That'll activate your glutes. And then turn the palms forward. And then turn the palms up, keep going. Now. Turn the palms more up so that they're almost facing the back. If you can, if your shoulders allow, Adriana, soften your knees. Good, you're starting to over arch. And then pull the arms out to activate the tricep, right? That pot, bottom part of our arms that we don't always love. Push and activate and breathe. Take your fingers, curl your wrists. Keep the arms super straight. And then turn the palms down, open them up, and let them come down, roll them out. Okay, so if we're not activating the back of the arms, 
We're not getting what we need here. So take, uh, take your hand to your chest, one hand to your chest, and feel the chest nice and straight. Again, we tone in here. We keep the back of the knee soft so we're doing over arch. Take the arm out, turn the palm forward, turn it up, pull the flesh of your chest back the other way, and then externally rotate a little bit more. And then as if you could pull the arm, right? So it's not a pull out of the joint. It's like a draw in of that middle back and then an extension of the arm. Good, release, switch sides. Take the other arm out, pull the flesh back to center. Feel that difference, right? If, I'm, if I've got my back to you, if I just reach and pull the, the arm out of the shoulder joint, that doesn't feel good. But if I activate here and then reach the arm, it feels a whole lot better. So you're here, the palm goes straight uh, forward, palm goes up, the pinky finger reaches a little bit more. I'm resisting the, the flesh, I'm pulling it the other way, and then feeling the extension of the arm without pulling it out of the shoulder joint and then release, let go. Good, roll it out. So we're back to wide if you took a break there. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, swan dive down and take your hands to your blocks. And with the hands on the blocks, I want you to press gently up so that you're more straight. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. So if you took your shoulders up to your ears, and then imagine that you're going to fish your chest out from that. So the chest just get long. Feel the mid-back work. What do you got to do to get the mid-back to work? I actually had to sink between the shoulder blades a little bit. Keep that. Walk the blocks forward. Think down dog, but only wide legs. Draw the head right between the arms. So here we are, we're big stretch. The hips pull back, the arms pull forward. Find the middle back, find the middle back, everybody. Breathe, pull the feet out isometrically. And then imagine wrapping the skin of the heels of your feet back in to get the outer hips to engage. That's it, breathe. This should actually feel good. If it doesn't feel good, maybe don't reach quite so far. And then walk your blocks back. Bend the knees and come on up to standing. And feel that again, right? <clears throat> so last thing here, I'm gonna stay wide just so you can see what I'm doing with my hands. You can take the legs back together. We're gonna um, take the hands forward, pull the shoulders back, Touch palms, turn your palms around so that your wrists are, are crisscrossed. If that hurts anything, just go to flat palms, okay? So from here, I want you to pull them up, pull them back, pull them down, lift the chest, tone the belly, don't over arch the, the back and take the arms up. See if you can hug your ears. Some can, some can't. Watch. So watch that you don't just pull the hips forward in order to do this. And then lower them all the way down. Take them back to your chest level. Switch palms. Pull back. See if you can find the mid back. It's, it's like, I, fe I feel like I found a new toy. I'm like, oh, wow, check that out. Never really noticed that before. And then take the arms up. Breathe and take them down all the way down and let go, shake it out. Grab one of your blocks. Take it behind you. What happens as soon as we do that, <laughs> right? It's like we need some oil in there. So if your chest, if your shoulders are forward, pull them up. Pull them back and then pull them down. And I want you to take this block and imagine you could touch the floor straight down. Now fire up the legs. Think mountain pose. Don't overlock the knees. 
take the flesh of those heels back in to engage the outer hips, press the block straight down. But notice, right, I'm not doing this. I'm not pulling my chest out. I'm not pulling my hips out. I'm just pulling straight down and breathe. From here, I just baby pulses, baby pulses. As soon as those shoulders want to come forward, I want you to quit doing it. Breathe, baby pulses. And release it. Whoo, and roll it out. Set your block down. Take the arms out. Crisscross your elbows. Bend the arms. So you're in eagle arms, right? And you know, right? If you've been taking it, if your palms don't touch, don't force them. Don't get all cockeyed to make that happen. Back of the palms or separate the elbows, back of the hands, okay? I know I say that so fast. I'm like, you got it? <laughs> so you're here. In eagle arms, this is a back stretch, right? The back of the body. I want you to see if you can do the same thing. Take the elbow, the ears, the shoulders up to the ears, roll them back, let them come down. Feel the chest or really the whole side body get long. Fire up the legs, give your glutes a little baby squeeze. Bring the head into alignment and pause. And then when you release, notice which elbow's on top. Inhale, take it up. Squeeze your ears, engage the mid back. Take it down, crisscross the elbows the other way. Woo. And breathe. And notice, right? So we roll them back and down. We get the shoulder blades in place. I see if I can tap into the back, the middle back again a little bit. And I just find that and release, take it up. Exhale, nice forward fold, everybody. Soft knees. Let the head hang, the hands on blocks just to soften the elbows. Big deep breath. Let the head be super heavy. We're doing a lot of work here. And then press into the blocks. Take your hands to your knees. Come on up and <laughs> roll back. And I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm still playing with this whole idea. But for my body, it makes sense. So how do we take that and move it into something like downward facing dog? So you can bring the blocks back to the front of your mat. How are you doing, Betty? Okay. Find mountain pose, right? We're all different. So we just want to engage those legs. Imagine you have a block between your thighs. Your inner thighs roll back a little bit to open the sit bones. But then the heels wrap back in to get this more active. It's a tricky little, it's like a real nuance here. And then take the arms up. Can always tell when I'm in training mode, right? <laughs> Exhale, hands down, bend the knees as much as you need to. Open those shoulders back up and imagine the inner elbows already starting to face forward. Tone the belly in, <sighs> breathe. Step back with your right leg. You decide here if your um, back knee is up or down. Draw the inner thighs together. Start to level out the pelvis. Take one hand to one knee. Curl in through the pelvis, but then lift the chest. Find that more neutral space, and then find the front knee bend and push through the back heel. Where are you in space, everybody? Squeeze the back glutes. See if you can fire up the back leg. Take the arms up. Maybe hug the ears, but then engage the mid-back and breathe. <laughs> Tone the belly. Exhale, slowly come down. Slow, slow, slow. Step back to downward facing dog. Pause here. Take your feet a little wider on your mat. 
And then look at your hands and walk your hands to the middle. I know that it's going to feel weird. I have my thumbs touching. I have my fingers spread out. Got the shoulders externally rotating. And I want you to pull those hands away from your uh, ears or from your shoulders. Bend the knees if you need to. Now, from that big old scrunch, just soften the upper shoulders and see if you can find the mid-back. And then look at your hands. Go back to your normal width. Inner elbows face each other. The upper arms wrap and externally wrap. I'm going to pull my arms away. I'm going to find my mid-back. Find your breath. Look at your feet. Walk them back to your normal hips width. Bend the knees a bunch, a whole bunch. And then lengthen your spine, lengthen your spine, lengthen your spine, back, back, back. Bend the knees, sissy. Yep. And then pull the shoulders, engage your middle back. Woo! And then your regular down dog. I know that's a lot. Look through your head, step forward, right leg. Engage your legs, hands come to your knee. Lift up, start to tone in, find the middle space of the hips, right? And then draw the arms up. Listen up. You're going to take the elbows to your side body. You're going to pull the arms back. You're going to keep the chest lifted and breathe. And then you're going to bring them in. You're like a robot. And you're going to take them up. And you're going to breathe the whole time. Good. Inhale here. Exhale, Woo. pull back, lift the chest. Last one, inhale, exhale, push up. And then take it all the way down to the floor. Step back to down dog and then lower your knees to the floor. <laughs> and find a child's pose or hero pose. So if you're doing child, don't let your head hang down. I will often stack one or two fists and let my head rest in a neutral plane while I'm in child's pose. Just breathe, everybody. All right. So back to table pose. From table pose, right foot forward. Blocks come under your hands. If you want, you can leave the left knee down, but if you do, just like move in through that back thigh so that the hips are more level. Otherwise, lift the knee. Lower your left hand block so that it's more stable. And then take your right arm out, out to your side. I want you to pull the right shoulder in until your chest is facing or your collarbones are all facing that same right side. And then engage the arm, lift it up. See if you can find the mid-back engagement instead of up at the neck. Find your breath. Reach your arm forward. Turn the palm in. And exhale, let it go. You're going to switch sides super easy. So either both blocks are flat and you can go to down dog or just lower the knee and switch sides. Find the pose to start, right? So draw the hips level, engage the back leg or lower the knee. Take your left hand out to the side. Pull the shoulder in so that you feel like the collarbones are more up and down. And then in try to find that tricep muscle, the back of the arm. Lift that arm. Find the mid-back. Press through the block on the floor. Bend that front knee so it's level. Breathe. And then reach it forward. Reach it forward. Turn the palm in. Lower that hand down. 
step back down dog, lower your knees, and either child's pose or a seat. <laughs> right, so we work the legs a lot all the time. And then when we get back into the shoulders, it's like, holy moly. So wherever you are, come on up to a seat of any sort. You can sit up on your block. You can sit cross-legged. All of that is okay with me. <clears throat> and then find that level space of the shoulders again. And imagine your elbows being glued to your side body. Good. Turn the palms in and then take the arms out. Elbows stay relatively glued. And just notice, right? Head stays in alignment. The chest stays lifted. Then a little tone to the low belly. And then bring them in and cross. And open. And cross. And open. Elbows stay in. Cross. Open. I know. So external rotation, right? Open. Last one. And release. Good. Just roll it out, everybody. Shake it out. And then take the arms out, turn the palms forward, turn the palms up, draw the shoulders back. We've been playing with this the whole time. Turn the pinky fingers up and then reach both arms back a little bit. Watch for tension in the neck. I'm feeling some, so I'm gonna lower the arms a little bit to try to stay in the mid back and not in my neck. And release it, Woo, shake it out everybody. I know, right? And so I always go overboard. Like if I'm learning something new, I'm like, I'll do it a thousand times because that feels so good. All right. So come to standing. You can come up any way your lovely yogi body wants to. Be Just be nice. Come all the way up to standing. So we've been playing a whole lot with Warrior 2. So I want you to go sideways on your mat. Go sides, go stand sideways on your mat and go wide, your normal wide, and pigeon toe the toes a little bit. And then imagine again that idea that if I could wrap the skin of the outer heel in without moving the feet, what do you feel, right? The glutes engage just by this kind of interesting move of the heels, but I don't want to externally rotate the whole legs and pull the hip bones together and the hips forward. I still want the little dive of the inner thighs and that pull of the heels. So it's kind of a little interesting play. And then take, if I'm going to mirror, it would be your right leg. So I'm going to take my left leg, my left foot and pivot and then I'm going to see if I can line up ideally heel to arch or heel to heel. And then I'm going to take this hip complex and I'm going to draw it back to the center. And that's hard to feel in your own body. I have the benefit of seeing a camera to go, oh, wow, look at that. So take your hands to these side hips and draw this front hip back and up and the back hip in that makes sense right so then what do we feel here we feel the tensor fascia lot of the side hip muscle engage and then i'm going to make this pose really long on this side leg i'm going to keep this and i'm going to start to bend the front knee and i'm going to notice if i start to do my normal shift forward for me take a look at your front knee and point that knee over toward your pinky toe and then sink down if you want. And then here we go again, right? We zip up here, we lengthen, we take the sit bones and we draw them under, right, Adriana? So we draw this here. If we draw these back hips, see what you've been missing, sis? <laughs> if we draw this hip kind of under, but then bring the hip forward, then all of a sudden I've got some power here. And then maybe for me, I can go a little longer without losing the back leg. And I'm going to keep drawing this front hip under for me. How does it feel for you? I'm going to keep powering this up 
Then take the arms out. Holy moly, lift your front toes, everybody, so we get grounded. Feel this. Turn the arms up. Keep turning them. Extend. Squeeze in through the middle back, but then extend through the arms and find those tricep muscles. Woo! Breathe. Take both arms up. Exhale, forearm to thigh. Take the top arm over and hug your ear. And breathe. That's it. And then push yourself up. Woo! Turn your toes forward. Maybe bring them back in a little bit. Find your breath. It's very interesting. So when we play with this, and especially when we're playing with something new, or new, a new idea in our bodies, what we want to do is play, right? We don't want to overdo. I, I should listen to my own advice. <laughs> so toes are a little pigeon toed. Then the other side, my right side, maybe your left side turns out. Before I even worry about bending the knee, I might put a little soft bend in it, but I'm going to see if I can get the hips to level out some. And I like feeling that. So in Warrior Two, the back leg is ro rotating in some, right? We're not purposefully rolling it all the way in, but we're allowing that leg and that hip to, to tone in some. The hips are level. I'm going to feel this. I'm going to start to bend the knee. What happens to my body normally when I go, right? I drop in here. I forget to engage. So press through that leg, feel this side of your hip starting to work. Try to point the knee toward that pinky toe a little bit. Feel the front hip glute wrap under, but keep, try to avoid this lean forward thing. Try to just see what happens. If I pull that front hip back and up, this whole backside goes, oh, I'm supposed to work here. Then maybe go deeper, maybe, but not at the expense of the back leg. Take the arms out, keep the palms down this time. I want you to roll the shoulders back, find the tricep, these things hanging down here, find those, see if you can engage them. Chest is open, belly is toned in, don't overreach the back arm, find your breath. Good, inhale, both arms up. Exhale, forearm to thigh. Take the top arm over the ear. Your palm is face down. The back body still working here. The top of those ribs reaching up. Breathe and come all the way up. Woo! Take both arms up. Good, walk the heels in some. Come into a nice forward fold, let it go. Just breathe, everybody. And from this wide leg pose, I want you to walk yourself back to the front of your mat and then come to down dog. Spread the fingers. Soften the knees. Notice if your down dog's starting to feel any different. Imagine getting your side body longer. Breathe. And then lower your knees to the floor. Whew. Yay. <laughs> Good. Just take a second here. You're going to need your blanket again. And this time the blanket is going to, it's going to be back where it was originally. But we're going to lay on our bellies on the blanket instead of on our backs. Whew. So come on down. And your head is off your blanket. Your pubic bone ideally is on your blanket. And the whole center line of your chest is on the blanket. And for now, you can just put one hand on top of the other and use that for your pillow so that your head your head is not over dropping 
If you tend to have um, a lot of arch in the upper back, you might go with a, a block instead. It just doesn't feel great, so I like the hands. And then press your pubic bone down into the mat. Flip your toes under and lift your knees off the floor. And as soon as you do that, notice your low back. What, it, what just happened? Did it go back into an arch? If it did, really lengthen the tailbone back down the blanket. Yep. And breathe and fire up your legs. Push your tailbone down. Push the pubic bone down. Just see if you can lift one set of toes off the floor. Don't lift high. As soon as you go back to arching, you've gone too high. Breathe, work in the back line of the body and lower. Fire up the legs, lengthen your tailbone, push that pubic bone down, lift the other foot. Woo. Try to stay level on your blanket and lower. Lengthen your tailbone, see if both feet will lift and the toes will point. Don't overlift. Keep them low. We're working with the hips and the glutes if you can't feel that. Woo, and lower everything down. Whew, shake it out. And then take the arms out to a cactus. Let the head drop. I want you to lift the right arm level with the shoulder and take the head up at the same time. And when you take the head up, don't look forward. But look toward the top of your mat so you have a little curve in your low, in your uh, cervical spine. And then lower down. Same thing other side. Start to lift. Lift the head with it. Right? Breathe. Press your pubic bone down. Don't let your upper or lower back over arch. And lower down. You know what's coming, right? Press down through the pubic bone. Engage low belly both arms and your head. Don't overlift the head. It's probably the hardest thing. Squeeze through the back body, but don't over squeeze. Lift the legs if you want. Woohoo! Breathe. Lower down. Oh, holy moly. <laughs> and breathe, everybody. Hands go down at your sides. We're almost done. If you let Nothing happened. You'll feel right where the shoulders go. The chest collapses. The shoulders drop. That's okay. It's a stretch. Palms are face up. I want you to purposefully bring the shoulders to your ears. Squeeze them at or squeeze them back. Reach the hands up and toward your feet. Pull the shoulders and imagine that somebody's pulling on your hands to lift your upper body. And breathe. Oh, yeah. So lift, lift, lift. Lift your chest. Lift your shoulders. Bind your breath. Push into your blanket. Push and let go. Ooh. I know. We have one more element to all of that as we play with this idea of locust pose. So right now we're really focusing on this upper body work. Now let's add the leg engagement to that if you weren't already. So the hands go down, palms are face up. Let the shoulders hang to the floor, just let them. Kind of feels a little good after all the work we've been doing. And then start to bring the shoulders up to your ears, but then start to bring them up to the shoulders. The arms will start to lift. But then pull them down alongside your hips. Engage your belly. Push into your pubic bone. Start to lift the chest. Start to lift the head. See if the legs will either one stay down but engage so knees are off or lift the hips. Breathe. If you're a certain spot on your blanket, you're not going to be able to lift. I just scooted up. And breathe. And then take your hands to the floor while you're lifted. Draw the shoulders back. Lower the legs. There's your cobra. 
right? Body's open, Betty, don't force it. And come get you. Bring the shoulders back, bring the elbows in. Externally rotate the arms. Lower down one vertebra at a time. And relax fully. Take a deep breath, everybody. Roll over to one side. Take the blanket out. Come on to your back. We're not near done. Oh, maybe strap. <laughs> Do you have a strap, Adriana? Okay. Whew. Can anybody go? Whew. Glad she's done with that. <laughs> Oh. oh, just take a moment, right? If we all just took a moment <laughs> more often Ooh. and tiny little tilts and tucks of the pelvis, tuck in, lengthen out, tuck in, lengthen out. Good. One more. I want you to Tilt and then tuck. Press into your feet and lift up. Only halfway, again, halfway bridge. Here we are again. Shoulders are down. Let them be soft. Take the glutes and lengthen them down to the sit bones. Feel the legs start to get super active. The hands are on the floor or they're gently holding your sides of your mat. From here, push into your left foot, lift your right foot a couple of inches and lower. Push into your right foot, lift your left foot a couple inches and lower. Now the secret is, right? Seeing if we can keep the hips level, lift your right foot. Which side is, is stronger or weaker? Which side is Having to work harder, lift your left and lower. One more, both sides. Lift your right and lower. Lift your left and lower. Re-engage the glutes. Walk the shoulders under. Feel the glutes go really deep into the sit bones. Palms are face up, bridge pose. Big deep breath and lower everything down. Everything, everything down. Woo, hallelujah. Bring your right knee to your chest. Wrap your fingers around your right knee. Push your right knee away from you. Extend the left leg out. This should be old hat for everybody who's been with me for the last few weeks. Breathe. Level out your hips and lift your left foot a couple inches off the floor. Point the toes or the ball mound just for something different. Breathe. Inhale here. Exhale, lift the left leg. Don't rock on the pelvis, stay neutral. And lower it all the way down to the floor, all the way, all the way. Take your hands behind your knee or grab your strap and take the right leg up, press the ball mound up toward the ceiling. Shoulders are even, breathe. And release knee to chest. Straighten both legs, wiggle out both hips, see how they feel. Bend both knees, both feet to the floor. Bring your left knee to your chest. Wrap your fingers around the front of the knee or behind the knee. Press that knee away. Straighten your right leg to the ground. Once again, notice where you're sitting on the sacrum. Can you find the middle line of the sacrum? And stay there no matter what you're doing with your legs. Low belly engages, the right leg lifts a couple of inches. Press through the ball mounds of both feet just to stretch it out. Inhale, deep breath. 
Exhale, lift the leg, lift, lift, lift. Now, if I bring my leg too high, I'm going to flatten my back and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to not lift so high, but I'm going to extend through that leg. And exhale, take it down. Hands go behind the knee or you grab your strap. Take the leg up. Reach the ball mound of your uh the leg that's heading toward the ceiling, reach it up toward the ceiling. Engage the other leg, just keep it active. And release both legs straight. Check it out, how's it feel? Grab your block, sorry I didn't cue that. Take the block at the narrowest level between the knees, not the thighs, but the knees. We've been doing this too. Feel your pelvis come to neutral here and squeeze your block. And then curl your pelvis, so lengthen your tailbone, lift the hips a couple of inches, squeeze your block. We're not going to spend a lot of time here. Exhale, lower down. Grab your block, take it to the second width. So just a few hip resets here. Your lower back is bothering you or your SI joints. These are uh, really good exercises. So we go from a tilt or a neutral to a tuck. Curl it in. Lift your hips. Lengthen the sit bones, right? Tuck those or, or curl those uh, glutes up and in. Squeeze your block. Five, four, three, two, one, lower down, bring that block back up, turn to the widest level, adjust the feet, squeeze your block, lengthen your tailbone, lift up a few inches, curl that tailbone, squeeze your block. Five, four, three, two, one, and lower. Good, go back to the second width just uh, to finish. Tilt and then tuck and lift. Give it a little squeeze. And lower. Set your block aside, grab your strap. How time flies when you're having fun. Um, I didn't cue this ahead, but hopefully it won't be too much of a trouble to put your strap in a loop. If you need help with that, anybody in the room, let me know. So we put it in a loop. And sis, if you, if you don't have it, I can throw you mine. Got it? And then feed your legs through the loop. Bring the strap up to your mid thigh. And just tighten it enough so that your legs are roughly hips width apart. And then lengthen through the pelvis again. I'm tucking in. I'm going to lift the hips a few inches. This time I want you to push out. Just hold. Now, if you're just tired of lifting those hips, you can do this with the glutes with the hips down. You don't have to lift. And if you are lifting, resist the urge to lift high. I just want some good purchase against that strap as we pull and hold and breathe. And if your hips are lifted, lower down, but keep the tension on the strap. If your hips are already down, keep going. Yep, everybody breathe. Make sure your back is long. Breathe, yep, that feels good. And just release, Woo. good. Fish your legs back out of that strap. Grab your one block again for me. Just hold on to it. Lift your hips, shift your hips to the right. Bring the knees up. I want the block to go underneath your knees. So as you come into a twist, I want it to be a softer twist. So the block goes under the knees. You can start to open up, maybe shift. So your knees are to the left. 
Maybe shift your left shoulder a little more to the left and see if we can find that open back again. Once your knees are resting, just let your feet relax. If they fall to the floor, that's normal. Just breathe. Ideally, those knees are at the same level or a little higher than your hips. Ideally, that's where we would like them. Just breathe. Good. Try to soften, everybody. Really soften. We did a bunch of upper body work, so we're going to just try to let this twist settle our spine. And then take the block out and turn all the way onto your left side. You can use your arm as a pillow. So your knees are still bent. Now you're laying on your left side. I want you to reach your right arm forward as far forward as you can. You might even do a little bit of a face plant here as your head rolls off your arm. Stretch. And then inhale it all the way up. Open it out to the side. And one more. Reach it up toward the ceiling. Stretch it all the way out. And then reach it up to the ceiling. Come back to your twist. Release it. Take the knees back to center. I'm just going to turn around so I got room. If you're too close to the wall, it just won't happen. So here we are again. You're on your back. Shift your hips to the left. Draw the knees up. Take the knees over to the right. Once you're there, maybe notice if your right shoulder could just go another inch or so to the right, right? So that'll flatten or lengthen or widen the upper back a little bit more. And then take the arms out wherever they are. Soften the legs, let everything relax. Take a nice deep breath. Take it in and let it go. Relax your jaw. Try not to overdo anything that's happening right here. And then take the block out. Come all the way over to your right side. Knees are bent. Your arm can be used as a pillow. And then take the top arm up. Reach it all the way forward. Stretch. Again, maybe your forehead comes to the floor. And then inhale. Reach it up. Exhale. Open into a little deeper twist. And then inhale up, reach the shoulder around and out. And then inhale it up, back to your twist. Deep breath, everybody. And then the knees come up, come back to your back. Bring your right knee to your chest. Stretch the left leg to the floor. And switch. Let your right foot glide over to the corner edge of your mat. And then release the left leg and let it come to the other corner of your mat. Kind of get a feel for your hips, where they are. Feel free to take your blocks or blanket underneath your knees or your upper legs. And then feel the shoulders soften and descend to the floor. The palms go face up. The legs fully relax wherever you are. 
and find Shavasana. Breathe and let go, everybody. Soften everything. Let your body soften all the way down. Let the tension in the mind soften. See if you can let go even more. Start to wiggle your toes and your fingers, everybody. Very slowly bend the knees. Let your knees come toward your chest. And rock side to side until the knees curl to one side or the other and take two full breaths here in fetal pose. Then as you're ready, press up. Oh, find your seat, bring your hands to your heart. And bow to your own playful spirit. Be willing to explore, to play, to question, and to believe. Namaste. Namaste.
Thank you, everybody.